QuickBooks Online 2021 Transaction List by Date Report. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online 2021. Here we are in our free QuickBooks Online test drive practice file, which you can find by typing into your favorite browser, QuickBooks Online test drive. We're in Craig's Design and Landscaping Services. We're going to go down to the reports on the left hand side. We're going to be taking a look at a transaction detail report, which you may be able to find by simply typing in up top, which we may do in the future. But for now, let's scroll on down so we can see it in the categorizations that we have here. Let's bring this down to 100%. And it's going to be down in the accounting area. So we're going to be down in the accounting, my accountant transactions. And we're looking for the transaction detail. Now, be careful here because there's a transaction detail by account. We're looking for the transaction detail by date. So we're going to open that one up. And then I'm going to close up the hamburger up top. We're going to change the date, uh, adjust the range 010120 to 12.31.20. We're going to go ahead and run that report. So here we have the information down below. We're going to be opening up both the balance sheet and the income statement as well. So let's go up top, right click on the tab up top, duplicate that tab. I'm going to duplicate it again, right click and duplicate it again so that we have the balance sheet and then the income statement. We'll do it one more time, right click and duplicate one more time. This is our standard format. We want the balance sheet, income statement, then whatever other report we're working on, and then another tab in case we want to open another report or have some other data that we want to go back to without kind of deleting the item that we are currently in. So I'm going to go to the tab to the right. We're going to be opening up the balance sheet by going to the reports on the left-hand side, favorite report, the financial report, the balance sheet report. Then we'll have a range change up top on the date range from 010120 to 123120. Run in that report, closing the hamburger on the upper left, holding down control, scrolling up to get to that 125%. That's where we like to be. Then we're going to go to the second tab. We're going to do the same for the income statement, profit, and loss. Go into the reports on the left hand side. Then I'm going to open up the PL profit and loss report, close the hamburger. And the date range, range change, range change, 010120 to 123120. Run that report. So there we have that. And then we have our transaction detail report closing up the hamburger here. Now, if we think about this report, it's going to give us all the transactions that have happened in a, in a set period of time, in this case, a year. But you might run this report like periodically as well. And this is a great report for bookkeepers if they want to basically charge people in, in by transaction rather than by just hourly rate, which can be a really good option because you could set up your, your rates here instead of telling someone, hey, I'm going to charge you hourly and they're kind of skeptical as to how long it's going to take. And when you bill someone, your hours change from time to time, uh, then you might have questions about why the hours changed from from period to period. And you just, you know, your hours may vary just based on your, the speed of your work that you're doing. And if you have other people working on it and whatnot, that can be a kind of a hard system to track to some degree and somewhat tedious to track. It could be a little bit easier if you're able to basically bill on some kind of standard set of items. And one way you can set up a standard billing set would say, I'm going to charge this much per range of transactions. So if you, if I do, you know, between 50, zero and 50 transactions per month or something like that, then I'll charge you this amount. If I go over that into the next range of transactions, I'll charge you this amount and so on and so forth. And then if you, if you do bookkeeping either weekly or monthly, oftentimes monthly, because then you do the bank reconciliations uh, or quarterly or yearly, then you can actually run the transactions here and you can count the transactions. And then you have a concrete uh, verification. You can actually run this report, provide it and say, hey, look, there's, there's the number of transactions. This is what we... Uh, based our, our report on. Now, there are some other reports you can use for this as well that would actually calculate the complexity of the transactions a little bit more. So you can do a similar process with like a journal report, which will actually give you the all the accounts that will affect it. Because like payroll will have multiple accounts affected for one transaction, and they can be a more complex type of report. So that's a couple things you can do with it. Note that um, you, you also, if, you, if you're reviewing someone else's work, what they did, if you're saying, hey, look, someone else do work and you're delegating tasks and you want to see what they have done, 
then one easy way to do it is to go into the transaction detail and see how many transactions have have taken place during that period and obviously if you are an instructor then it's a great tool to to review work that has been done uh, as well now like every other report it's going to be basically a report that's going to be given information about you know things that happen or things that constructed the balance sheet report so it's going to be supporting information here every time we enter a transaction here we're constructing the balance sheet in some way and this transaction detail report will give us detail about those transactions if we go into any account on the balance sheet or income statement you might say i can drill down on that information like like this and i get a, a transaction detail report and this transaction detail report is similar however of course this transaction detail report is going to be just the detailed information with regards to that particular account instead of having all of the transactions that are going to be you know in order basically by date so that's what we have in the transaction detail report so if we go back on over here i'm going to hold down control and scroll down a little bit since this is a large report and then we'll kind of uh, go through it here let's see if we can review it we've got the date on the left hand side date of the transaction we've got then the transaction type so these are going to be basically the forms that are used to create the transaction deposit bill invoice bill check and then uh, invoice and so on and so forth you really want to get used to and understand what these actual names mean and how they tie into the forms that we'll use to create them and we'll get a lot of practice when them when we do data input every time you do data input you want to get used to that and keep on practicing how how the data input is going to relate to these forms and that'll make it a lot easier to glance at a report and get an idea of what's going on with it and the numbers if they are affected posting we've got the name vendor name em employee name customer name and so on memo if applicable and then the account so we have the account checking account accounts payable checking and so on and so forth and then the split which would be the other account remember that every transaction has two accounts that are affected if there are only two accounts then it'll just give us the other account if there are more than two accounts or some kind of multiple activity that's reported to one of the two accounts then you're going to see the split item and to see the more detail you'd have to go into the split item here and then we're going to have the amount the amount on uh, the right hand side for the amount of the transaction this is also a really good report to practice your sorting of your filters that can be done with reports as well so we can filter on a lot of this data for common types of filters might be filtering by transaction type here or possibly name but transaction types probably the most common so if you were to customize the report up top and look at your filters here then you could go to the transaction type and if you wanted to look at multiple types of transactions that have occurred during that time range then you could simply check off those transactions and it'll it'll filter the report down to those particular transactions so that's going to be the the overview of uh, of this report we will take a look at this report after uh, basically every section that we make when we enter the data input and that'll give you a good idea and, and again it's really good for grading and kind of checking your work as well when you're doing practice problems so we'll, we'll run this report as we work through our practice problems let's go ahead and do our normal formatting and then export this report and save it as a pdf we haven't done that for the last two let's do it this time so i'm going to hit the uh customize up top let's customize this thing i'm going to say we want to remove the pennies negative numbers let's bra let's bracketize them putting brackets around them and redden them redditize them and then we're going to go to the header and footer we're going to remove the date prepared and the time prepared we'll just remove those run that report so there we have it and now let's go ahead and just export this as a pdf file so there's the pdf we're going to download it and save it as a pdf because we're in chrome it will then open up down here so it's going to open up down there i did it twice because it was kind of slow and i clicked it two times but there it is then i'm going to open up our folder this is where we want to put it we're going to use the good old drag and drop so i'm going to open up this folder we're going to drag and drop it in there whether it wants to go or not if it's kicking and screaming that's okay because we can drag it so then i'm going to hit this one and then it's like we're going to left click on it drag it it's like no and then we're going to drop it ah, into the folder so there it goes and then we're going to open up our other excel sheet we're going to want to add it to this excel sheet as well so we'll open that up 
we're going to put a new tab here. So we're going to hit the new tab button, opening up a new tab. And then I'm going to go back to our other form. I'm going to close this out. And now let's export it to Excel as well. We want to export to uh, Excel as well. Opening up the Excel document. So we'll open that up. Now this one's probably going to have some formatting issues. It's not going to fit on one page wide. So we're going to mess with that. But first let's enable the editing. Let's hit the triangle up top. So we copy the whole sheet. I'm going to hit control C to copy. I'm going to go back on over. I'm going to be on a one or select the entire sheet control V on the keyboard in order to paste it. Now, does this fit on one page? I'm assuming like it doesn't. So I'm going to go back to this tab and no, it certainly does not. And then I'm going to go back to the first tab. So these, these lines there indicate the page breaks. So this one's way too wide to fit on a page. So first, what we'll do is landscape it. That's our first solving issue. So I'm going to go to the page layout. I'm going to go to the page setup, orientation, landscape. So that had a minor effect, that kind of little bit. Now these merged cells, these are kind of a problem because what I'd like to do is delete column A because I don't even need it because it's got, it's got nothing in it except for this total down here at the bottom which doesn't, it doesn't even have a total. So we don't need this, but it's tough to do with these merged cells. So I'm going to unmerge these cells. So I'm going to go to the first tab. I'm going to unmerge, which is in the home tab alignment, that merge. If I hit it again, unmerged. So I'm going to do that here. Home tab alignment, unmerge. Here, home tab alignment, unmerge. Then I'm going to take these out of column A. I'm going to move them on over to column B. I'm just going to move them over here so, so that I can delete column A completely. So click on column A, right click, delete. That's solved. So then, then what else can we do to shorten this thing up? This column looks a little wide. I don't think I need this column that wide. So I'm going to shorten this column up a bit. Let's do that. That should be useful. This one looks a little wide. Let's shorten that up a bit. Memo looks awfully wide. Let's shorten up the memo. Don't need it that big of a memo. The split column also looks awfully wide. Let's shorten up the memo column. And so there we have that. All right, so it's still not quite there. Now, some of these columns you may not use and you could delete them, but then you might say, hey, I might need it. So maybe you can hide them. Maybe I'll hide one of these columns, like this posting column. I mean, do I need that? I'm not sure, maybe, I don't think so. Let's go ahead and right click on that, that column D Let's just hide it just in case I need it to come back like later. And then the memo doesn't have a whole lot going on in it. And maybe the number, I don't need the number column. I'm going to right click on that and hide it as well. So that brings it pretty close. And then maybe I'll just make these a whole lot smaller. I don't think I need this name if it cuts off a few things. That uh, kind of messes it up. I'll make this one a little bit smaller. It's not going to, it's not going to do it. Let's hide the memo column. I'm going to hide the memo column. And that should do it. All right. So we'll keep it at that. Now, if I want this centered again, I can't center it again. I can highlight this one at a time, go to the home tab alignment and center this way. But the better way to do this, so you don't have that merge cell funniness is to right click on this and then go to the format cells alignment. And then I want the horizontal, I want the horizontal alignment across the selection. So then I can, I can align it without doing that merge cell thing, which really can mess you up. So I recommend doing it this way, or at least testing it out. See, I see how you like it. So we're going to go to the format cells and then alignment. And then we're going to go down to center across like, so it's kind of like, so and then do it one more time, right click and format the cells. And then again, we will center across. So there it is. Now let's, let's go ahead and double click on this name down here and we'll call it trans, trans uh, list by date, something like that. And then now let's save it again and let's export it to a PDF file. So we got all of our reports on that one PDF file again. So we're going to go to the print option, printing it to the cute PDF printer. And then we're going to select the entire workbook, which is now, 
I got a lot of pages. I got 25 pages. I'm going to scroll through it quickly. I kind of want to just get to the end to make sure that that last one that we did, that we printed now landscape, which is totally different than the portrait printing, you know, page orientation that we've had in the past. So I'm going to try to scroll down there. But it's awfully slow considering that there's 25 pages that we're going through. But we're almost there. So we did that. I remember doing that. Here it is. So here's our new one. And so you can see it's a landscape. So it looks a little bit different. I don't care. I don't mind that it's it's multiple pages long. But we want to keep it at uh, one page wide. One page wide. So my computer's going awfully slow. So there it is. So that looks good. I think it looks good. And so if I go all the way to the bottom, I don't have any things with like two columns on. Okay. So let's go ahead and print it. Let's print it. See if I, my computer crashes here. No, it's going to do it. It's going to do it. You could do it computer. And so there it is. I'm going to write it on this one. I'm going to double click on that and say, save it. So once again, I'm going to minimize these. And then there's our, there's our statement, which we can attach. And it's got all these reports on it now. So I'll open that up just to check it out. Notice if you open this up in uh, Adobe Reader, like we're doing here, then the landscape doesn't even really matter that much because it still opens it up this way. It's not like you got to rotate the page. See, here's, here's the portrait one up top. This one's a landscape. And even though they rotated the sheet, they, you could still read it top to bottom like this, which is really uh, helpful. That's really helpful. So it looks good.